Hello, and welcome to the Product Tech Lab. We're excited to have you here and look forward to helping you bring your product ideas to life. We are providing the solution, Magical Cloud Solution, the invisible shield of protection, cybersecurity. Virtualize like a pro with Product Tech Lab. Application support. Call to backup infrastructure. Blabee and training facility. Technical innovation and idea. Need more scoop on our tech savvy services? Drop us a line at support at producticlab.com or zip over to our website https colon slash slash www.productechlab.com. Pust. We're also big shots on YouTube. Find us at youtube.com slash at productechlab and let's be friends. Thank you from Producticlin and more detail please mail us. So in our previous class, so we have seen what is a class, what is object, and how to create a class, how to create an object. And also we have discussed about uh, how can we create a variables and methods inside the class, all those things. So today we'll discuss more about uh, methods, Java methods. So normally the methods will be created inside the class. Okay, all the variables and methods should be part of the class. And uh, what is a method? So method is basically a block of or, or group of statements or block of code, uh, which will perform certain task, which will perform certain task. So why we need to create a method? Suppose if you want to do some task repetitively, and instead of writing the same code again and again, we will just create one method. And whenever you want to perform the task, we can just call that method. Okay. And that method will perform the job. So the normally the method will be created inside the class. So the class is a collection of variables and methods. So the methods also part of the class. And whenever you create a method, we can call or we can invoke that method through object. So once you created your object, through object, we can call that method and then per method will perform the job. So whatever or whichever logic we have written inside this method, that logic will be executed only when you call that particular method. Okay. So there are two kinds of methods which we have. So we have a built-in methods, we have a user-defined methods. Built-in methods, user-defined methods. Built-in methods means those methods are already available in Java. And there are predefined classes and in those classes, those methods are already exist. So we have to just call those methods. If you want to use those methods, how to just call. But uh, user defined methods means we can create our own methods. We can create our own customized methods according to our requirement, our own requirement. And these are two kinds of methods which we have. So first of all, what is the definition? What is the method? As per Java, the method is a group of statements which will perform certain task. And uh, when it will perform the task, only just writing method is not enough. Whenever we want to perform the task, we have to call that method. Okay, so we have to call that method, then that method will perform the uh, task or job. And that method we can call through the object of the class. Once you create an object for the class, through the object, we can invoke the method. And there are four different type of methods are there. Sometimes it will not take any parameters. Parameters in the sense input. And the written value means output of that method. So sometimes the method will not take any parameters, but return some value. Sometimes it will not take any parameters, but it will return some value. And sometimes it will take parameters, but no return value. Sometimes it will take parameters, but also return some value. So different ways we can create a method. It depends upon our requirement. We have to choose. These are the four categories. We can pass parameters. Sometimes we no need to pass any parameters. Sometimes method may return some value. 
return me so the output will be returned and sometimes method may not return any output it will just perform the task that's it it will not return any value so there are many ways we can create different combinations of methods we can create and before creating let us understand what is parameter what is return value so let me explain this with a simple uh, built-in method so we already discussed about some of the built-in methods in our previous classes string methods we have discussed all string methods are available inside the string class so we can use all the string method they are all built-in methods so let me take one uh, example let's say i'm taking one string variable equal to new string so what exactly i have done here is i created a simple object of a string and here i'm passing some value this is my string variable this is my string variable or string object which contains uh, some value right so now if you want to find length of a string okay so this is a value actually so i want to find length of a string can i call method from the string class yes because this variable is what string type or we can say this is an object so yes dot length when i call length method from the string class Will it take any parameters? Is it taking any parameters? This particular method is taking any arguments or parameters. No parameters. Why? Because it is an empty bracket. And is it returning any uh, result for us? Any output for us? Yes, it is returning length of a string. So whenever a method is returning something, we can store that value in some variable like this. Or we can put this entire thing in the print statement so that we will get some output. So this is an example. So here, this is an example for what, in which category this method comes under in four categories. No parameters, but return some value for us. No parameters, return value. So this is belongs to second category. Okay, this is no params, but it returns value. Okay, so this is one example. Let me take another example. For the same, same string variable, I want to extract the substring of the main string. So if you want to extract a substring, so what is the method we have to use? S dot substring of, let's say, 2 comma 5. Now look at this method. So is it taking any parameters? Yes. Two parameters we are passing starting index ending index two parameters it is passing so this method is taking parameters and is it returning some value for us is it returning something yes it is also returning substring so returned value we have to store some variable like this okay so this is a way we can create uh, these are the built-in methods they are already there in the string class so through this object through this object, we are able to access all the string methods. Some of them will take parameters. Some of them may not take parameters. Some methods may return some value. Some methods may not return any value. So it depends upon our requirement. We can create our own customized or user-defined methods. Okay. Now, let us uh, try to create different type of methods by considering these points. No parameters, no return value. No parameters, return value. No Take parameters and no return value. Take parameters and return value. So different combination of methods we can create. Okay. So normally where we have to create a methods in the class we can create. And to access those methods through the object of the class we can access. Right. Now let us see some examples. Uh, how can we create methods with the different type of combinations. Let's go to Eclipse and create new package trace day 11 to finish. Now here I'm just creating a class uh, without having main method. Let's create main method in the separate class. Or you can have main method in the same class, no problem. So let's take a new class and uh, I'll name it as greetings. My class name is greetings. I'm not taking main method. It's simply a class. And normally class contains what? Variables and methods. But not mandatory. Okay. If you have some variables, you can create variables. And if you have some methods, you can create a methods. But if you have, if you don't have any methods, I just have only variables, you can define the variables. 
or if you don't have variables, I have only methods, then you can define only methods. Okay. So there are no methods available as soon as you create an object of the class. When you create an object dot, it will show you all the methods. Okay. For example, uh, if you create a string class, suppose if you create a string variable like this, right? So as soon as you say yes dot, right? It will give you all methods, auto suggestions. What are all methods are there in the string class? Similarly, it can create an object of any class. Okay. And if you say object name dot, it will show you list of methods available in that particular class. So that is the only way we can uh, find all the methods in the class. Okay. But that is not needed actually. We don't need to remember each and every uh, method in the class. There are hundreds and thousands of methods are there in every class. So it is very difficult to remember just to have few methods. Once you started using it frequently, you will be able to remember them. Or if you still not remember, you can simply say object name dot and you can just type one or two characters, first or two characters, it will automatically suggest to you what all methods are there. Okay. But there is no specific command or specific method uh, to check all the methods available in the class. No. Okay. Now go to the new class greetings. And inside this, I'm just creating uh, some method. This is a I use this class just for creating methods. Okay. I don't need any variables for now. Okay, I just create some methods. And to access those methods, we have to create an object of the class. Right. So where we have to create an object normally, where we have to create an object of the class, where we can create inside the main method, right? So whichever class is having main method, that is called main class. So we have to create another class. You can also include main method in the same class, no problem. But normally we don't do like this. We will always maintain separate main class. So I will name it as, uh, I'll name it as greetings main class greetings main and here i'm taking main method okay now i have two classes one is greetings class and another one is greetings main class which contains the main method so whenever you want to create an objects all objects should be created inside the main method okay. so inside this main method we have to create everything so let us try to use this main method later. So now come to the main, uh, greetings class. Here, I will create a different methods, a different type of methods. As I said, there are four ways we can create. So the first method, no params, no return value. No parameters, no return value. So how to create this method? No parameters, no return value. Okay, let me create one method. M1. Okay, so this is one method, M1. You can give any name to this method. There is no mandatory to uh, give same name or a different name. You can provide any name. This is just a user defined name. So M1 is just a method name. Inside this, I'm not taking any parameters. No params means empty bracket. No parameters means no. Uh, parameters also called as arguments. It's a different name. So no parameters or no arguments. Now inside this method, I will write a simple thing called system dot and I can simply say hello. So this is a simple method. This is a method name. Open bracket means no parameters. And what this method will do when I call this method, it will just print hello. It will just print hello. So normally in the methods, we will implement some logics. So when I call this method, it will just print hello message. And uh, it is not returning any value. So if it is not returning any value means we should specify void. So in Java, void, what is the meaning of void is nothing. So if any method is not returning any value, in front of this method, we have to specify void. But sometimes the method may return integer, method may return string or any other data type. So in those cases, we have to specify the data type what type of data the method is returning. So that return type we have to specify in front of this method, okay? But for now, this method 
is having just a uh, print statement. It is not returning any value. It is not taking any parameters, right? So empty bracket is representing no parameters, void representing no returned value of this method. So now I've simply created one method. Now come to the main class. How to access this method? Only through the object. So we have to create an object and then we can access this method. So now come to the main method. Inside the main method, we can create an object of greetings class, right? Let's create greetings gr equal to new greetings. Now I created one object. So as soon as you created one object, this object will be acquired everything from this class. Okay, object is an instance of a class. That means this object contains the M1 method. Whatever method we created inside the class, same method is belongs to greetings. Now, can I invoke this method by using gr? gr is just a name of the object. Now, next, how to call that method? gr dot. You can see as soon as you said dot, it will show you what are the list of methods which are available in that particular class. So which method we created? M1. So you can see M1 method is already there in this particular auto suggestions. Other than this uh, user defined method, there are some more additional methods also displayed in this auto suggestion because whenever you create a class, Java will automatically add some default methods. Okay, so we don't consider them, we can simply ignore. And here, this is a method which we have created, just we have to select that method. Okay, and uh, whenever you call this M1 method, this will go and execute this particular statement. This body will be executed and uh, it is not taking any parameters. So we don't need to pass anything in the bracket and it is not returning anything. So we no need to maintain any variable here. Okay, we no need to create any variable to store the return output. So simply we can leave this method like this no parameters, no return value. So this method will call the first one. When I execute this, run as Java application. So this will execute and just print hello message. So this is how we can simply create one method, no parameters, no return value. And we can invoke that method from the main method through the object. This is the one example. Now, let me create another one type of method come to the main class so the next type is no parameters no return value sorry no parameters but it will return some value the next one no parameters but it will return some value this time so what i'll do is i will create another method void m2 and uh, you should not use same name again and again. Okay, So the method names should be different. But again, some cases we will use same names. For multiple methods, we can use same names. That is part of the overloading concept. Okay, That is, we'll explain later. But by default, normally when you create a methods, the method names should be different. Okay, So now I'm giving M2. So this time, no parameters. So empty bracket but I will return some value. So what I will do is previously what I have done, we have just printed the hello message. Okay, just we printed hello message. So this time I will, instead of printing this, I just want to return the message. For returning, we use one keyword called return. Return and uh, here I will specify hello, how are you? Like this. Okay, and whenever you're returning something here, you have to specify the return type. So what type of data we are returning? What type of data we are returning here? And this bracket is optional, okay? So after returning, this bracket is optional, not mandatory. You can put bracket, no problem, we can put this bracket. Return statement will be used to return any value from this method. Now the return type is string. So we are returning this double quotation value. That is a string actually. So the return type should be string. The return type should be string. So now if I look at this method, it is not taking any parameters, but it is returning some output. So return type is specified. 
Now, how to call this method? So to call this method, again, we have to use same object, greetings dot. You can see M2 is displayed this time. So take M2. So should we leave this or should we do something else? Just we are calling M2 method. So it is not taking any parameters. So we are not passing any parameters. But if you call this M2 method, it is returning some output for us, right? Because it is returning a string type of an output. So whenever a method is returning some result or some output, we have to hold that result in a variable. So we have to additionally create some variable here and we have to hold that output in a variable. So this particular method is returning string output. So we can create one string variable and then you can store that output. Okay. But uh, if method is not returning anything, no variable is required. If method is returning something, then we have to hold that value or we have to capture that return value in a variable. And after that, we can simply print that value. Say yes. Now, when I execute, so this method will be called, M2 method will be called. Now we got a message. So whatever the value we have written here, we just printed that one. And the variable is optional. Suppose if you don't want to use this variable, you can put this statement in the printl. Printl and you can directly keep it inside. So instead of yes, you can directly put this inside the printl. So whatever value written by this M2 will be printed by printl. Okay. So this is how we can call a method which is returning a value. So two different methods we have seen. Method no parameters, no return value. No parameters, but it will return a value. Now the third one. Takes parameters, but no return value. It takes parameters, but there is no return value. The third method. Third type of method. Sometimes a method will take parameters, but it will not return any value. Okay, now let's create one more method. M3. So M1, M2 we created, now M3. So it takes parameters. So let me take, you can pass any number of parameters. You can pass any number of parameters. So it takes parameters. So here I'm taking one string type of parameter, string, some person name I will take as a parameter. So this is a variable which will hold the value which we are passing to the method. And this will receive that parameter. And inside this, it will not return any value, no return value. No return value means we have to just print. So I'm just printing here. I say hello and concatenated with what? The name. So whatever name parameter I'm getting here, I'm just printing the name along with the greeting message. And uh, it is not returning anything. So what is the return type here? Void is a return type. So if I look at this, this method is taking some parameter, string parameter it is taking, and uh, it is not returning anything. Void means it is not returning anything. But what this method is doing, whatever parameter it is taking, it is just printing the same thing along with the greeting message. We are just passing the name. And it is printing hello along with the name. This is the implementation. Now, let us invoke this method. Through the object, we have to call greetings gr dot m3. Okay, so this time we have to pass parameter because this is expecting a string parameter. A string input it is expecting. So here we have to pass a string output in the double quotations. Okay, so here we can pass some name like this. So if method is not expecting anything, no parameters, so we no need to pass. Just we call this method with empty bracket. But if the method is expecting some parameter, we have to pass this parameter. Okay. So, okay. Now we have passed these parameters. Is it returning any value for us? There is no return value. There is no return value. So we can just leave this method as it is. We no need to again print by using print statement and we no need to receive the output in another variable, not needed. So simply execute. Okay, now you can see 
we are just passing the name but it is giving message so this is this is the statement which is got executed so this particular value which we are passed and stored into this variable and this parameter is received this variable is received that parameter whichever we passed here and internally it is just printed the same name along with the greeting message so return type is void this is another way we can create a method takes parameter there is no return value sometimes we can pass multiple parameters also not only single parameter multiple parameters also we can pass and if you want to pass multiple parameters you can simply say comma after this comma you can specify n number of parameters at the same time whichever order we specify in the same order we have to pass the parameters okay remember this now next type of method takes a parameters and also returns a value takes parameters and also returns a value the next method takes parameters also returns a value same method i'm taking again let us copy this let's name it as a m4 and it is taking parameters i'm passing name as a parameters and instead of printing this value i'm just want to return it so remove this print and say return so return this is a string greeting message along with the name after combining after concatenation i'm returning the final string so what is the return type here is string is a return type string is a return type so this is another method which is taking one parameter and also returning some output so to invoke this method we can simply say gr dot m4 and it is expecting one parameter so we have to pass some string type of parameter and also it is returning some value we have to store that in a string variable we'll create one string variable and then we can print that particular variable so we are passing parameter and also we are receiving the output into the variable so after receiving the output from the variable into the variable then we have to just print it so this is a how we can get the output okay so if you take any method which is belongs to one of this category it can be built-in method or it can be user defined method anything it should comes under one of the category sometimes no parameters but return some value no parameters but return a value sometimes it will take parameters but no return value also sometimes it takes parameters and also return the value so according to our requirement we have to write our own customized methods these are all user defined we created our own methods in the class and through the object we can call whichever method you need so this is all about methods concept we can create different type of methods inside the class okay now what is the method the method is a group of statements or we can one statement sometimes a group of statements which will perform certain task when the method will perform the task whenever you invoke that method or whenever you call that method it will perform the job how to call that method how to invoke this method through the object through the object we can invoke the method remember these points now so let us discuss some other concept so the class contains the two things variables and methods so for whatever we discussed about all methods so how many ways we can create a methods how to invoke those methods now let us discuss something about variables okay class variables how many ways we can store the data into the variables in the class there are many ways to do it how many ways we can store data into variables and uh, there are normally three different ways by using object we can directly access the variables and we can store the data in the last class also we have seen other than this we have a method through constructor also we can do it 
Okay, let me show you directly with the example. So now we'll try to understand with the variables, the class variables. Create a new class and uh, I'll name it as a student class. And this is purely class. I'm not specifying any main method. So inside this student class, uh, I will create three variables. I can say int SID, which will store student ID, string yes name, it will store name of the student, tab grade. So this will store grade of a student. So three variables I'm taking. And uh, I will assign the data into the variables to the object. And after that, I want to print this data. So print this student data, what we can do. To print the student data, we can write one more method, okay? I can say void print student or STU data or print student data. And this is just for printing the student data. I'm just writing one single method for printing the data. First, I'm printing SID, and then uh, concatenation with space, and then concatenate with S name. Then again, I'm concatenating with the space, and then I'm printing grade up. Single statement I have written to print all the details of students. So this is the implementation of the class. Three variables I have defined, and just one method is defined, which will print the data of the variables. Okay. Now I will create another class, student main class. Student main class, and here I'm taking main method. Okay, now we'll see something here. This is my student class, and this is my student main class. So, can we create an object of student class? Yes, we can create an object of student class, and then we can access all the variables through the object. Right? We can directly access these variables through the object and we can assign the data into the variables. So as soon as you created an object, how to create an object of student? Student, I say uh, stu equal to new student. So this is how we will normally create an object. So once you created an object, then what will happen? It will create a separate memory. So as soon as it says new student, it will create a new student object. The name of the object is STU. So what is this object contains three variables, SID, S name, grade. Along with this, there is a method called print student data. So this is our object. So through this variable, we're able to access everything. So we can access the variables or we can access a method. Everything we can access through this object reference variable. So if you want to assign the data into the variables, how can we assign directly stu.sid, stu.sname, stu.grade. We can directly access these variables and we can assign the data. This is the first approach. How to store the data in a variables. The first approach is what? Through object reference variable. Okay. How to store the data in a variable. The first approach is what? through the object reference variable. Okay, let me store it here, the first approach. Store data using, or you can say using object reference variable. We can directly access the variables and store the data. So how can we do it? STU dot, you can see SID, I say some data stu dot yes name i can store some name stu dot yes name then stu dot grade this is a character so i can put in single quotes so this is a one approach we can directly access the variables through the object and we can assign the data into the variables and after that we can simply call that method stu dot print student data, okay? So like this, we can simply uh, store the data in a variables. And after that, we can just call that method, which will print the data of the student. Now, so when I run this, so you will get the data of the student. 
So this is the normal way uh, we will follow. So we directly access the variables and then assign the data to the variable. So we are directly accessing it. There is no intermediate way. So we are directly accessing the variables through the object and uh, we are assigning the data or we are storing the data into the variables. So this is the first approach. Now, the second approach is we can also store the data in the variables through the method, through method. Okay, for example, here along with this print method, I will create one more method. And that method will just to store the data into the variables. This method is using for just for storing the data into the variables. Okay, so for example, here I'm creating one more method. Void, void, set student data, set student data. And it is not returning any value, but here I will take three parameters, okay? One is integer ID, comma, string, string name, comma, character grade GR. So I'm taking three parameters inside this method, three parameters. Okay, first parameter is ID, second parameter is name, third parameter is a grade. To store grade, I'm taking three different parameters. ID, name, and grade. So once you take these three parameters, now what I will do inside this method, I will store this data into this variables. Okay, simply what I can do is SID equal to ID. Okay, S name equal to name. Grade equal to GR, like this. So what I have done in this method, I'm taking three parameters and uh, whatever data I'm passing into this method, I will store the data in these three parameters first. And after that, I will assign the same variables data into actual variables. They are SID, as name and grade. And if you look at here, these variables are called class variables. And uh, here, whatever variables we created, these variables are called local variables. Local variables. These, these variables are accessed only within this method. Within this method only, we can access these variables. But the class variables, we can access everywhere. Inside the, throughout the class, ev in every method, we can access these variables. They are class variables. And whatever variables we created here, they are called local variables or method specific variables. Okay. So now I have stored the data in these variables. And again, I'm reassigning the same variables data in the class variables. Okay. Now this is one method. Okay. So now I will, what is the purpose of created this method to store the data in a variables? Okay. Now, how can we call this method from the main class? So before printing the data, okay, the first method is over. Now I'm talking about the second method, comment this part. Second method is what? Using a method, we can store the data using method. So we already created one additional method here. Just we have to call that method stu dot set the student data. Now we have to pass three parameters. So what is the first parameter? Student ID. So 101 comma. Second parameter name. That is a string. So we have to put in the double quotes. Now the third parameter is a character but that we have to put in the single quotes. So in whichever order you are receiving the parameters here, in the same order we have to pass the data. So first one is integer here. Here also first one should be integer. Second one is a string. So here also the second parameter should be string. Third parameter is a character. Here third parameter should be character. So in whichever order you created this variable, exactly in the same order we have to pass. So now what will happen? This particular data will store in these variables. Whenever you call this method, it will call this method. And the data will be assigned to these variables. And then internally, what this method will do, it will just assign the data into the variables. It will not print anything. It will not return anything. 
So what is the main job of this method? It will just take the data and store the data into the variables. That's it. That's the only purpose of this method. So once it is stored the data, then we call this a print data method. So this will actually print the data of the variables. So we have created some additional method to store the data in the variables and that we have called and uh, then to print the data of the variables we have called another method. So using the method also we can store the data in a variables. In the previous approach what we have done we directly access the variables and store the data but this time how we have done we just call one method by passing the data and this particular method is assigned the data into the variables. Okay. Now when I execute this, it will call set to student data method first. And once assigned the data, and then we call second method called print to student data. So that is got printed, same data. So whatever data we are passing here, the same data is got printed by print method. So this is how we can also store the data in a variable. So the first approach is by directly accessing the variables through the object, we can store the data in the variables. Second approach is just by creating one more additional method, we can also store the data in a variable. So what is the purpose of the first method? It will just print the data of the student. What is the purpose of the second method? It will store, it will take the input and store that uh, input or store the data in a variables. So this is how we can store the data in the variables. One is by directly accessing the variables through object. Second is by just creating one additional method, we can store the data in the variables. Okay. So now let me read the question. Uh, can simplify perform action from first method when we use second method? Yes. We can also combinely write one single method also, no problem. Okay, so one method for taking the storing the data and printing the data. Suppose set to student data is there. So if you put this statement after this, what it will do first, it will store the data immediately print the same data by using this method. We can also write a single method, no problem in that. Okay, but normally we don't do like this. Everything we don't put in one single place. Okay, it will miss the readability of the code. So for different purposes, we will create a different methods, okay? Suppose uh, you want to just store the data. I don't want to print it. Then how can we achieve this? So if you just print this statement, if you put this statement inside this, okay, suppose if you want to store and print at one time, you can call that method. But my requirement is different. I just want to store the data, but I don't want to print. Then how can we achieve this? So that is the reason for setting the data or storing the data, we create one method. For printing the data, we will create another method. So whenever you store, if you want to store the data, call one method. And whenever you want to print the data, you can call another method. So that is how we can create. So why these local variables are reassigned into the class variables? Why we are doing like this? Because we need data in this class variables, not in the local variables. The local variables we have used only to receive the data which we are passing from here. You can see here, we are passing the data, right? So whenever you pass the data to receive and store, we need some variables here. So this ID 101 should store in ID here. And David, that name should store in the name here. The character A should store in this variable. So whatever data we are passing here to store the data, we need a local variables first. We will hold the data in a local variables. After that, we will actually store the same data in a class variables. So whatever data we specified variables, again, we are reassigning the local data into the class variables. So that is the reason we need these local variables. We need these local variables. Okay. And these are the class variables. These are the local variables. And here, the names are different. You can just look at here. I have given different names to local variables class variable names are different. But sometimes we can also use same names, local variables and class variables. But that time, this method will confuse actually. So what is local variable? What is class variable? So that's the reason we can specify the different variable names. 
but it can also give the same name sometimes, but we have to differentiate them by using this keyword. So we have to use a separate keyword for that. In the next two sessions, I will introduce that. But for now, just remember this. So why we need to specify the variables here? Because we are passing the data into this method. Whenever you pass some data, we need some variables to hold the data. Okay, and then again, whatever data we have in these variables, again, we have to reassign the same data into the class variable. What is our ultimate goal? Ultimate goal is we have to have data in the class variables, not in the local variables. So that's the reason we are using these local variables temporarily to store the data, whatever we are passing from here. And then we are reassigning the same data to the class variables. That is our ultimate goal. Okay. So then we first call print set to student data method, which will set the data in the variables, then print the data from the variable. So without setting the data, don't print it. You will not get anything. Okay, first we have to set the data, then print the student data. So is this clear to everyone? Please confirm in the chat window. So there are two approaches I have told you. The first approach, using object, we can directly access the variables and assign the data. Second approach is what? We can create our own user-defined method, which will get the data and which will assign the data into the class variables. This is a second method. First method is through object. Second method is using a method. Will the data set by calling still method not store directly in the class variable? No, it will not store directly. So directly means this is the first approach. We, we need to go to the first approach. If we directly want to store the data in a variables, you directly access through the object and directly store it. No method is required. Okay, so here we are just calling this method by passing the data. And this method is storing the data in the class variable. And repeated multiple times, guys, some people may get some bored, but uh, please have some patience. But still people are not understood this. So here, this method is storing the data in the class variables. You got my point, Divya. So set to student method is storing the data into the class variables. It is a direct process. It is not indirect, it is a direct process. When you call the set to student data, what we are doing, we are passing the data. Immediately what happens is the set to student method data will be called, take the data in these variables. And what this method is doing, this method is storing the data in the class variables internally. So the set data method is directly storing the data into the variables. And this data we are passing from the main method. We are passing the data. Whichever data you want to pass, you can pass. Okay, now the third approach. This is second approach to the method. Now the third approach is using a constructor. Using a constructor. There is a third approach. Using constructor also, we can store the data in a variables. So now we need to understand what is constructor. Constructor is also part of the class. So far, what we have understood is a class is a just a collection of variables and methods. And the class is also have constructors. Constructor is just like a method. But the way of writing and way of calling is different. But it is just like a method. Whatever method is doing, constructor is also doing the same thing. So what is constructor? Constructor syntax exactly same as a method. And constructor name should be same as a class name. There's a major difference. The method name can be anything. We can provide any name to the method. But the constructor name should be same as a class name. So here I will create one constructor. Let's see. Student bracket and bracket. You can see if you look at the syntax, it seems very similar to the method. Okay, but it is a constructor. Why? Because the name is class name. Whatever the name you have given to the class, same name you have given here. That's one difference between method and constructor. Another difference is the method may or may not return any value. Sometimes it may return value. Sometimes it may not return any value. But 
constructor will never return any value. Constructor cannot return any value. That is another major difference between method and constructor. Constructor will not return any value, not even void. If it is not written any value, normally we specify void, right? In case of constructor, no need to specify void also. If you specify void, nothing will happen. But even we no need to specify void also. So return type is not compulsory. Even void is also not compulsory. Just write a constructor like this. This is a major difference. The method name should be same as a class name. And constructor will never return any value, not even void. Okay, remember these two points. But constructor can take parameters just like a method. So how we have passed parameters inside this method? In the same way, the constructor can also take parameters. Now I'm passing some parameters to this constructor, three parameters. Now what is constructor is doing? Constructor is also assigning the data into the variable. So same thing I'm doing here. Constructor, whatever the method is doing here, the same thing constructor is also doing here. It is taking some parameters, assigning the data into the variables. Okay. So this is a constructor. And one more difference is, in methods, we normally implement logics. We can write conditional statement, looping statements, everything we can include in the methods. But constructor is only meant for initializing the data in the variables. We should not write anything inside this constructor other than variables assignment. We can just for storing the data in a variables, we use constructor just for initializing the data into the variables, not nothing else. We should not write any loopings and conditions, any programming logics, we should not include in the constructor. So the purpose of constructor is totally different than method. Even though it is almost uh, similar syntax, the purpose of creating constructor is totally different. So now let me just compare the method and the constructor. Very, very important interview question also. What is a method? What is a constructor? What are the differences? So far what we understood, the method name can be anything. Whereas constructor name should be same as a class name. That's the first thing. Second point, method may or may not return any value, but constructor will never return any value. The second difference. What is the similarity? Methods can take parameters. Similarly, constructor also may take parameters. And the third thing is what? Method can be anything. So in the method, we can write anything. But in the constructor, we can just initialize the data. We don't write anything else. Constructor is only for assigning the data to the variables, nothing else. Okay. So this is the way. These are the differences while writing the method and the constructor, right? Now come to the main class. There is no specific reason. Actually, the purpose of constructor is only for initializing the data. So for that reason, they have created the constructor. If you write some logic here, then you will be able to return, right? But we are not going to write anything. It will not accept to write any logics. So that is the reason there is no need of returning any value. If you write something here, if you write some logic, then you can return some output, right? But first of all, in constructor, we never write any logics. So in that case, there is no need of returning any value, right? So that's the reason they have created constructor. Constructor is only meant for initializing the data into the variable. That's the only purpose of constructor, nothing else. But in the method, why return value is required? Because sometimes we write some logics also. And when you write some logic inside the method, that will return some value. So return is must for methods. But constructor is not needed, first of all, because we are not writing any logics. Until unless you write some logic, there is no return value. So obviously, no return value for the constructor. Okay, now how to invoke this constructor? How to call the constructor? Very important part. Listen to this. If it is a method, we have to call this method explicitly through object, okay? Explicitly through object, we have to invoke this method. But how to invoke the constructor? To invoke the constructor, we no need to call the constructor. At the time of object creation itself, 
the constructor will automatically invoke. Okay, that is a major difference between method and constructor. If it is a method, we have to invoke through object. We have to call this method through object. If it is a constructor, this will automatically execute it at the time of object creation. Whenever you create an object, the constructor will automatically invoke. You no need to invoke. So at the runtime, the constructor will automatically invoke and assign the data into the variables. And one more thing. As soon as you write your constructor here, here it is started giving an error. Have you look at here? In the main class, here it is giving an error. Previously, it was not there. Now it is started giving an error. Why? Because at the time of object creation, it is trying to invoke the student constructor. When you're trying to invoke the constructor, it is expecting three parameters. But here we are not passing any parameters. Right? It is expecting parameters, but here we are not passing any parameters. That is the reason it is giving an error. Okay. So what I should do now, we should create an object with parameters. So at the time of object creation, it will automatically invoke. But because of it is expecting three parameters, we have to pass parameters inside this bracket like this. Okay, so how many parameters the constructor is expecting? Those many number of parameters we have to pass. So at the time of object creation, the constructor will automatically invoke. So the data will be assigned to the variables at the time of creation object itself. So we no need to separately call that method. We no need to separately assign the data into the variables. So that is the main advantage of using constructor. So next thing is what? Once the data is assigned into the variables through constructor, what is the next thing? We have to just print the message, print the data by calling another method, stu dot print student data. That's it. So this will print data of the student like this. So this time we have not called this set to student data method. We have already commented this code. We just created an object of the student class, passed some data, and constructor is automatically invoked at the runtime. And after that, we just printed the details by calling print to student data method. So this is another way of assigning or storing the data into the class variables. We can directly access them through the object. That's a one approach. By creating user-defined method, we can pass the data, that is another approach. By writing the constructor also, we can assign the data into the variable. So these are the three different approaches. And which approach we have to prefer to use? Most of the times, we prefer to use constructor to assign the data into the variables. Okay, constructor will be used. Most of the time to assign the data into the variables, we always try to use constructor. Why? Because at the time of object creation, the constructor will automatically invoke. Okay, and that is only meant for what? Initializing the data into the variables, nothing else. Okay, when we have to prefer method, when we have to prefer constructor. If we want to assign the data into the variables, constructor will be preferred. And if you want to operate these variables, or if you want to perform some operations based upon this data, then we have to prefer the method. Okay, inside the method, you can operate this variable. You can do some calculations or you can write something, logic. For that, we will prefer to create a method. And to assign the data into the variables, we always try to prefer constructor. Okay, remember this point. Method is for creating or implementing the logic or programming code or programming script. Constructor is for what? Assigning the data into the variables. That's it. So these are the three different approaches which we have to store the data into the variables. Everybody's understood. Now I will show you what is constructor. I will discuss more about constructor. I've just introduced what is constructor. I will see more examples. Can we write multiple constructors? Yes, we can write. But we should change the parameters. Same constructor, you cannot write one more time. 
it will be duplicated. Okay, if I look at here, okay, so if I look at this constructor one more time, like this, it will be duplicated. You can simply say it is a duplicated. But you have to change these parameters. One parameter or two parameters you can take. I will show you that also possible. That is comes under overloading concept. There I will show you. Yeah, the method equal to assignment plus operation. Yes, you can do like that. Assignment you can do along with operation also you can do. Method. But constructor is only for assignment, not for operation. Okay, and is it mandatory to initialize the data parameters in constructor method only or we can initialize inside the method? That is up to you. Uh, that's the reason I told you two different approaches. Using method also you can do. Using constructor also you can do. But most of the times we will prefer to do it using constructor. Okay, but in the method assignment also we can do. Operations also you can do. But in constructor, only assignment you can do, not for operations. Because the main purpose of the constructor is initializing the data into the variable at the runtime. That's the reason whenever you create an object, the data is also assigned. But only you have to make sure you have to pass the data. Only just should not leave the object like this. Whenever you create an ob uh, object like this, you can see here, I'm passing the data also. Okay, if you don't pass the data, then you cannot create an object because there is a constructor inside this object, inside the class. So whenever you create an object, constructor is trying to invoke. Okay, and whatever parameters it is expecting, we have to pass the parameters also. So these are the three different approaches which we have to store the data in a variables. By using object reference variable, by using a method, by using a constructor. So all these three approaches are clear. Everyone, please confirm in the chat window. By using object reference variable, using method, using constructor. I will discuss more about constructor now. Constructor is a totally different concept. We will try to understand. Okay. So now let us compare. Very, very important question in interview. What is the difference between method and constructor? What is the difference between method and constructor? I will put all the points. Just remember this. And also I will go through these points. Difference between constructor and method. Method name can be anything. Whereas constructor name should be same as a class name. Okay, method name can be anything. But constructor name should be same as a class name. Method may or may not return a value. Depends on your requirement, you can create your own method. Sometimes it may or may not return any value. But constructor will never return any value, not even void. So you no need to specify void also in case of constructor. And we don't specify void. If method is not returning any value, we specify void. In case of constructor, we no need to specify void. And uh, the method can take parameters or arguments. Similarly, constructor also can take parameters or arguments. This is only one common point. And uh, if it is a method, we have to invoke or call methods explicitly through object. Explicitly means we have to intentionally call that method through the object. Object first we have to create through object. We can invoke the method explicitly. In case of constructor, no need. At the time of object creation itself, the constructor will be automatically invoked. At the time of object creation, the constructor will automatically invoke. You don't need to call it through object. At the creation of object itself, it will automatically invoke. And methods are preferred to use for logic. If you want to write a large code or programming logic, you have to prefer always method. And constructor is only meant for initializing the data into the variables. Constructor is only meant for creating the variables, initializing the data into the variables. So these are the points you have to remember related to method and the constructor. So without parameter also, we can create a constructor. I will show you that in the next examples. Okay, so just I have given some basic information about the constructor. So far it is clear or not, everyone. 
Yeah. So now let me elaborate a little bit about constructor. So there are two kinds of constructors. One is default constructor. Second is parameterized constructor. Okay, default constructor and parameterized constructor. So what is default constructor? What is parameterized constructor? Simple example. If the constructor is not taking any parameters, we call it as a default constructor. If the constructor is taking param parameters, means that's called parameterized constructor. So whatever constructor we created here, which type of constructor it is? Default or parameterized? Which type of constructor it is? It is a parameterized constructor, okay? Because we are passing the parameters. So let me give one more example. Let's create a new class. <laughs> Constructor. Yeah. I'm also taking main method in the same class. If you want, you can take another class, no problem. Okay, let me just keep this main method one side. Now in this class, I'm going to create one constructor. So when you create a constructor, the name of the constructor should be same as a class name, right? So take the same name, constructor demo. And this is called default constructor. No parameters. And what's the purpose of this constructor? For assigning the data into the variables. So here I'm taking two variables, int x comma y, two variables I'm taking. And this is a default constructor. So what I will do is I will assign directly data into the variables. So this is called default constructor. So no parameters, but it will do some task, right? What is the task the constructor can do? Only initialization. So in X and Y, I'm directly assigning some data. So this is called default constructor. No parameters. And now I create another constructor. And here I'm taking two parameters. I say int a comma int b. Two parameters I'm taking. And here a value I will assign to the x and b value I will assign to the y. This is called parameterized constructor. Parameterized constructor. Okay, and to perform the operation, I will create one more method. And to perform the operation, suppose I want to find x plus y, the sum of two numbers. I should not put that in the constructor. So we have to create a separate method. Okay, let's say I'm creating one more method called sum. So what this method will do, it will just return some value or it will print x plus y, sum of two numbers. And what is the return type of this method? What is the return type of this method? Void, because we are not returning anything, just we are calculating sum of two numbers. Okay, so default constructor, parameterized constructor, and one more additional method we created to perform the sum of two numbers, x plus y. Now come to the main method and let's create an object of constructor demo. Observe very carefully, you guys can tell me this answer. Constructor demo, cd equal to new constructor demo. Now I created an object or not? I created one object. And one point I told you, constructor will automatically invoke at the time of object creation. Now I have created one object here. And I have a two constructors. Now, which constructor will be executed? First one or second? Default or parameterized? Which constructor will be executed? Yes, default constructor. If you're not passing anything here, default constructor will be executed. Okay, because we're not passing any parameters and here also there are no parameters. Okay, so this will call default constructor and assign the data into X and Y. Next to, if you want to find sum of two numbers, what we can do? Dot sum. We can just call sum method, which will perform sum of x plus y. So when I execute, you can see it is printed 300. So this will invoke default constructor. Okay, now we are performing sum. Now observe this. Suppose I want to when I invoke the default constructor, it will always take only 100 and 200. 
but I want to pass the data dynamically. Whichever number I will provide, it will perform some of those two numbers. Then you can use a constructor demo, another type of constructor, which is parameterized constructor. So here I'll create another object. With one object, you cannot invoke all the constructor. Okay, so constructor demo dv equal to new constructor demo. And here we have to pass parameters. Let's say I can pass 10 comma 20. So this will invoke parameterized constructor. Okay, now you can call sum. Immediately you can call. At a time only one we can enable. Okay, either this one or this one. If you want to invoke both, you have to create another object. You can say here CD1, here CD2. Like this, you can specify. But with a single object, you cannot invoke all the constructors. So when I execute, now we got a 30. So if you want to add 100 and 200 static values, you can invoke the first constructor. And if you want to add some other values, whichever you want to pass dynamically, you can invoke the second constructor. So you can create multiple constructors also. One is a default constructor. You can also create a parameterized constructor. Okay. Understood everyone. All these points are clear. What is the difference between method and constructor? Please confirm in the chat window, everyone. Is this clear about constructor? And tomorrow, again, we will discuss more about methods and constructor. We have overloading concept. We can create multiple methods with the same name. Similarly, we can also create multiple constructors with the same name. So that concept comes under polymorphism. That's another type of object-oriented programming concept. So that we will discuss tomorrow's session. This is a basic understanding. What is method? What is constructor? How many ways we can create a methods? How to invoke the method? how to create a constructor, how to invoke the constructor. Okay, so this is all about constructor and method. Okay, so what is a method? Method is a, a block or group of statements which will perform the certain task and we can invoke the method through the object. And also we have seen different ways to create a methods. No params, no return value. No params, return value, takes parameters, no return value, takes parameters, returns value. And these are the three different ways we can assign the data into the class variables by using object, by calling a user defined method and uh, by creating another constructor. And also we have understood what is the differences between method and constructor. When you have to create a method, when you have to create a constructor. If you want to write implement a logic, then you can use method. If you want to assign the data into the variables, then prefer to use a constructor. Okay, and method name can be anything. Constructor name should be same as a class. Methods may return some values, but constructor will never return any value. But what is the similarity between constructor and method? Only one similarity. What is that? Can you guys notice what is the similarity? Only one similarity we have between constructor and method. Yes, it will take arguments, parameters. But method also can take parameter, constructor also will take parameters. But method can also return a value. Constructor cannot return a value. Okay, and one more major difference is what? If it is a method, we have to call through object. If it is a constructor, we no need to call actually. At the time of object creation, the constructor will automatically invoke. We no need to call the constructor. So these are the important things which we need to understand from classes and object. So we have understood what is class, what is an object, what is method, what is constructor. So these are the fundamentals in object-oriented programming concept. So based on this, we will try to understand other type of object-oriented concept like polymorphism, overloading, encapsulation, inheritance. So all these topics are based on this topics which we have discussed yesterday and today's session. Okay. So just practice this. This much is enough for today's session and try to understand these concepts and be familiar with this. And tomorrow's session, we will discuss about overloading. So that is also based on method and constructor. So tomorrow's session, we will continue.